All right, so now we're gonna do graphs of tangent and cotangent today. Uh, we just wrapped up doing sine and cosine and we were able to you know, find the period, find the frequency, find the amplitude, shift the graph left or right, but uh, using a phase shift, we were able to raise the graph uh, vertically and horizontally. Okay, we can do all those same things with tangent and cotangent. All right. Um, Understanding sine and cosine will really help us understand tangent, and understanding tangent helps us understand cotangent. Uh, then understanding sine and cosine also help with cotangent as well, okay? But I've mentioned this in class. I've shown you guys a few times uh, what the graph of tangent looks like uh, because, you know, trying to understand that trig identity of sine over cosine when we were doing the unit circle, you know, uh, really understanding you know, what happens at that division by zero there is very important. But what is it really created there, right? We have a vertical asymptote, okay? It's the graph of tangent, the values get infinitely close to that point, but they will never be at that point. Those happen every single time we have division by zero. So we create a vertical asymptote. So on this diagram here, on this slide, okay, on the right-hand side, see those dashed lines that are vertical lines through negative pi over two and positive pi over two? Those are the asymptotes. All right, and we're going to talk about how those are created and why. The range okay, of, of tangent, remember we've talked about this before, is negative infinity to positive infinity. It can be you know, any y value. We just have restrictions on x. Why? Remember the trig identity. The tangent is equal to sine over cosine. Very important. What happens, because cosine is in the denominator, we get division by zero every single time that cosine is zero. Where does cosine, you know, where is cosine zero? Cosine is zero at pi over two, right, at 90 degrees. Cosine is also zero at three pi over two, or uh, 270 degrees. So any time cosine is zero, tangent is undefined. That happens twice in one complete circle. So that's why graphing tangent and cotangent is a little different. All right, and the period for tangent and cotangent uh, is less than the period uh, for sine or cosine because cosine is zero twice in one 360 or one two pi circle. All right, so we can take a look at the values here. Uh, that relate to the graph here on the screen. So what's in the middle, that's what might show up on your calculator. So if you're in radian mode and you go hit y equals and you type in tan x, okay, or tangent x and you hit zoom seven, okay, okay, so that's zoom trig, it'll put it in that window there for you and you'll be able to see it. Now, some of the newer calculators literally show the asymptotes, okay, but on ours, our screen cap here, there is no asymptotes. You can kind of see where tangent goes all the way to infinity and then all of a sudden starts at negative infinity. There's not a connection point there because there's division by zero. You cannot cross over an asymptote. All right, so just remember that. So it is always discontinuous. And how do we know how often it's discontinuous? Uh, by two n plus one times pi over two because it occurs every pi over two. Why pi over two? Because cosine of pi over two is zero, okay? And cosine of three pi over two is zero. Five pi over two is zero. Seven pi over two is zero. So as we're going around and around and around, all right, you will get division by zero. That's where all the asymptotes occur. So in this case, all right, if n is zero, Okay, if n, n is just any integer. So if n is zero, all right, we have two times zero, which is zero, plus one, which is one times pi over two. Well, cosine of pi over two is zero. What if n is one? We have two times n, which is two plus one, which is three. Three times pi over two is three pi over two. Cosine of three pi over two is zero. All right, how about if n is two? Two times two is four. Four plus one is five. Five times pi over two is five pi over two. Cosine of five pi over two is zero. You get the point, I don't need to walk through it, but that's really you know, what we're walking through when we do this. All right, uh, my good old question mark shows up on the slides here. Uh, that should be a pi. All right, so it's x-intercepts are the form x-pi, and it's period is pi. This is different, 
All right, so please remember that that little box on the screen with a question mark, that means pi. Uh, somehow my version of PowerPoint on here isn't up to date or something. All right, so um, period is pi, whereas with sine and cosine, it was two pi, right? They would repeat every one circle. Well, tangent can repeat every 180 degrees, okay? But we're zero at at uh, pi over 2, 90 degrees, or 3 pi over 2, 270 degrees. All right, since the graph of tangent really has no amplitude, all right, we can put a number in front of there like we did with sine or cosine, but it just really expands it. It, it either is going to make it kind of get fat or get it skinny faster. All right, so there is no max or min value on tangent because the range is from negative infinity to positive infinity. All right, and it's, res within its, uh, it's symmetric with respect to the origin. So we consider tangent odd. Remember, if we graph this around the origin, and I fold the top part of tangent over the y-axis and over the x-axis, it laps on top of itself. So tangent is going to be an odd. Mm -hmm. So if I have tangent of negative x, I'm going to get back negative tangent of x. It's an odd function. All right, let's look at cotangent. Well, cotangent is slightly shifted and reversed of tangent. Why? Why? Because cotangent is equal to cosine over sine. Now we're looking for values that create asymptotes. Every single time that sine is zero, we will get an asymptote. Okay, and that's how you learn to graph cotangent. So, when is sine zero? Sine is zero at zero. Sine is also zero when? At pi, then what? 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi. Every pi, sine, or it goes to 0. And since sine is in the denominator of cotangent, right? Cotangent is cosine over sine. Every pi, there will be an asymptote. So that's why the domain here is a set of x where x cannot be n pi. All right, so right, if n is zero, zero times pi is zero, sine of zero is zero. If n is one, we get pi times one, which is pi, sine of pi is zero. If n is two, you have two times pi, sine of two pi is zero. Okay, so on and so forth. So as we continually go around the circle, it repeats. So we can create this table here of inputs and outputs uh, for x and y based on our cosine. Okay, now that's what's defining the asymptote for cotangent, all right? So I'm not graphing sine here, I'm graphing cotangent. And notice that cotangent starts at positive infinity and works down to negative infinity, the exact opposite of what tangent does uh, when we graph those. And notice that tangent went through zero, right, and was between negative pi and two pi, or negative pi over two and positive pi over two. Looking at this screen, right, cotangent goes between zero and pi, and then pi and two pi, and then two pi and three pi, okay, and so on and so forth. Uh, same way with the capture in the middle, all right, when you graph that, you'll graph one over tangent in your calculator, and you'll hit zoom seven, all right, uh, that should be zoom trig. If not, double check me on that one pound. Uh, and then you'll be able to uh, graph it. All right, so if we look at the, the graph of uh, cotangent of x, okay, we already discussed how to get its, its intercepts, its period. Its period is the same as tangent, okay? So tangent, its period is pi, so is cotangent. Okay, uh, the bullet point down here is incorrect. It should be pi n. Um, uh, the x, 2n plus 1 pi over 2, that's where we find the x-intercepts. All right, but um, it should be, that should be pi n right there. Okay, and then its graph has no min or max, and it's also an odd function. All right, so if I take cotangent of a negative x in the uh, argument, I get back negative cotangent of x. Alright, so remember this is the important piece here. You can think of cotangent in two ways. One is 
You can think of cotangent of x will be undefined when tangent is zero, or you can think of a cotangent as cosine of x over sine of x. I tend to think of the latter one. Uh, it, it mainly it works better for me. But when you are graphing this, this is the two possible ways to put in cotangent. You would write it, because remember your calculator only has tangent, sine, and cosine built into it. So for you to graph this identity of cotangent, we would have to say 1 over tangent in our calculator. So y equals 1 over tangent and hit zoom 7. Or you can say y1 equals cosine of x divided by sine of x and hit zoom 7. All right, and that will put it into trig for you as well. So how we determine uh, the period. All right, remember with sine and cosine, the period was 2 pi over b. Well, that's because sine and cosine repeated every 2 pi. Tangent and cotangent repeat every pi. So to find the period for tangent or cotangent, it's pi over b. Not 2 pi over b, it's pi over b. Okay, so that's how we're going to calculate uh, the period when we do some examples here. Then the next step when you guys graph these, we got to sketch the vertical asymptotes. Okay, sketch two of them so that you can put them in between. So how do we find, you know, the vertical asymptotes? Well, when we know the period, all right, so we would say that bx, okay, is negative pi over 2 and bx is pi over 2 for tangent. All right, and we know that for cotangent, when it's in its standard form, all right, our bx is 0 and our bx is pi. All right, we saw those on the graphs before on the previous slide. So cotangent will go between 0 and pi, then pi and 2 pi, 2 pi and 3 pi. Tangent's going to go negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, pi over 2 to pi over 3, okay, pi over 3 to 5 pi over 3, or I'm sorry, 5 pi over, sorry, 2. All right, over two, not over three there. So, all right, so those, basically, those are based off the steps from before, because we're not doing any phase shifting yet, we're just calculating the period. So, uh, much as how we had to divide the interval before, all right, so we could get it into four parts to label tangent, okay? Just like we did with sine and cosine. Then we want to evaluate the function at three different points. Its first quarter point, its midpoint and its third quarter point. Okay, we already know the left and right endpoints. Those are the asymptotes. All right, we have to define these so we know if the graph has been reflected or flipped up or around. All right, so that's why we graph the midpoint should always usually lie on the x-axis unless we've graphed shifted the graph up or down. All right, but the quarter point and the three-quarter point. All right, those are going to define the direction of the graph. And then we want to join the points with a smooth curve. All right, so let's do an example here. We want to graph y equals 2, or I'm sorry, tangent of 2x. 2x is the argument of tangent here. So the first thing we have to do is find the period, all right? So remember, we take the argument. The argument tells us what b is, okay? So uh, it's going to be pi over 2 for our period. So what we want to do is, um, so it's just pi over b. And b is 2, so pi over b, that's the period. Now we have to locate the two adjacent vertical asymptotes. So we have to say that 2x is equal to negative pi over 2, and 2x is equal to pi over 2. Why 2x? That's the argument. So we take the argument and set it equal to the original left and right asymptotes. All right, so negative pi over 2, that's the left asymptote of tangent. All right, and pi over 2, that's the right asymptote. So this is going to give us where the new asymptotes are, all right, because we're moving this graph. So if we solve the left and the right hand side, all right, we for x, we get the left asymptote now is going to be at negative pi over 4, and the right asymptote is going to be at pi over 4. So that's where we're going to draw our first two asymptote lines, okay? That's what it should look like on your paper. So make sure you take the time to do this, all right? So let's, I'm gonna flip back just for a second, okay? We're gonna take the argument, which is 2x, and set it equal to negative pi over two and positive pi over two and solve for x. That gives us the um, 
asymptotes that we see right here. Okay, now we have to divide that interval into four equal parts. So we should be able to find the midpoint, right? Add those two, you know, and divide by two. And then when we do all this, this is all reviewed from the sine and cosine. You should be able to get these, all right? Uh, the midpoint's the easy one. I gotta take negative pi over four plus pi over four, all right, and divide it by two. Well, negative pi over four plus pi over four is zero. Zero divided by two is zero. And then I have to find the halfway point to find the first quarter. So I would take negative pi over eight, all right? Or I'm sorry, negative pi over four plus zero, okay, and divide that by two. That's where I get the negative pi over eight. And then to find the third quarter value, okay, I would take zero plus pi over four and divide it by two, and that would give me the positive pi over eight. All right, so there's where I get my interval parts. All right, so now we evaluate those parts of the interval. So I'm gonna plug tangent of negative pi over eight, or in, I'm gonna, sorry, let me start that one over. I'm gonna plug negative pi over eight into tangent of two x. I'm gonna plug zero into tangent of two x, and I'm gonna plug pi over eight into tangent of two x for the x values. So when we do that, all right, it kicks back uh, where we're gonna graph these, okay? So if we take a look on the graph here, uh, looking at the values, right? If I plug in x, all right, so tangent of 2x and I plug in negative pi over eight, I get back a negative one, all right? If I plug in zero, I get back zero, and if I plug in pi over eight, I get back one. So that tells me how to plot this, all right? So at negative pi over eight, I got negative one, so I'm gonna put a circle there. At zero, I got zero, and then at positive pi over eight, I got a one, so I place a one, and now I connect the dots, essentially. All right, so this creates a hand-drawn graph of tangent of two x versus the parent function of tangent of x. Notice what happened to this graph. Well, tangent of two x, the asymptotes are negative pi over two and pi over two. Okay, so that's our parent function, tangent of x. Now, tangent of 2x did what? It truncated it and squeezed it in by pi over four, okay? So, just so you complete it, it's always a good tendency to graph at least two periods worth. So, we can add on the next section, since we know how the original graph grows, we can follow the pattern, because it's a sinusoidal, it's a repetitive pattern, so we're able to graph the other two parts. All right, let's do this graph now. So this is kind of getting back to, this is putting everything into play here um, that we did in like with the sine and cosine in the last section. So we have y equals negative three tangent of one half x. So follow the steps, look at the top equation, y equals a tangent of bx. So we have to find the period first, okay? So remember the period is pi over b. B in this case is one half. So remember my fun little box right here is pi. All right, so the period in this case now, pi divided by b, so pi divided by one half is two pi. Okay, so it's two pi. So now we have to find the adjacent and the vertical asymptotes. All right, that's just like we did before. We set the argument, the one half x equal to uh, what did we say before? Negative pi over two and pi over two. All right, so when we, when we set those equal to each other, we end up getting just negative pi and positive pi where asymptotes are, right? So just review that again. We're gonna take the argument, the one half x, because it's not shown on my slide here. This is something I'd write on the board, uh, but it's on the, it's on the previous example. We're gonna set the argument, the one half x, equal to negative pi over two, and we're gonna take one half x, the argument, and set it equal to pi over two, all right? Because those are where the original asymptotes are for tangent. So when we do that, we get the asymptotes to be x equals negative pi and x equals uh, positive pi, okay? Does that make sense? I think I got a typo there on the uh, slide for you. So, we're gonna divide the interval from negative pi to pi. All right, so that's what the question marks there are again. I apologize for that. 
uh, we're going to divide that into four equal parts. All right, so negative pi and pi, those are our new vertical asymptotes. So if I take negative pi plus pi and divide it by 2, I get 0, right? Negative pi plus pi is 0, 0 divided by 2 is 0. So that gives me my midpoint. Then I have to take negative pi, okay, plus 0, my midpoint, and divide it by 2. So that gives me negative pi over 2. And then I have to take pi, or 0 plus pi, and divide it by 2. Okay, that's going to give me my three-quarter part, which is pi over 2. So that's how we get the negative pi over 2 and the pi over 2 there. All right, then we have to evaluate those points. So I'm going to take the negative pi over 2, substitute it into the original equation, negative 3 tangent of 1 half x. I'm going to get back 3. I'm going to substitute 0 in to the negative 3 tangent 1 half x. So that ends up giving me tangent of 0, which is 0. And then I'm going to plug the pi over 2 in to that original equation of negative 3 tangent of 1 half x that replaced the x with the pi over 2, and I end up getting 3. So that's where the values in, down below in the blue came from, the 3, the 0, and the negative 3. By substituting in the key points, all right, our quarter point, our midpoint, and our three-quarter point back into the original equation to get the y values for when we graph this, all right? So we're gonna plot the points. We draw our two vertical asymptotes, our dashed lines at negative pi and positive pi, all right? And then this is this graph of tangent normally goes the other way, right? But it's flipped because the three in front is negative. So this makes tangent start at positive infinity and end up at negative infinity. So plot the points we just calculated and then connect them with a nice smooth curve. All right, so we always kind of compare them. The period is large because it's one half. So if we take a look back here, right, that's why the period's larger. The normal parent function of tangent goes between negative pi over two and pi over two, but since we have a one half as our argument, we've made the period larger, okay? So the three, the negative three flips it, all right? And also since it's bigger than one, the absolute value of negative 3 is bigger than 1. That actually stretches it uh, vertically as we go through this. All right, so let's do a cotangent graph now. You know, these are becoming very, very repetitious, uh, pretty easy for us to calculate. Uh, so, you know, this is one, hey, maybe pause the video uh, and do this one yourself here. But first thing, all right, we're going to find is the period. Our b here is what? 2. All right, so we got to go pi over 2. So that's our period now. All right, and then we have to set the argument, the 2x, okay, but remember cotangent goes between 0 and pi now. So we've been setting the tangent stuff equal to negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. Cotangent, we have to set the argument equal to 0 and the argument equal to pi, then solve. All right, so just keep track that we're going to have to do that in this case. So we're going to take the 2x and equal 0 and solve for x, and we're going to take 2x equal to pi. Once again, my question mark the box, that's the pi. All right, so our left vertical asymptote will be 0. Our right vertical asymptote will be pi over 2 because 2x equals pi. We, do, we solve for x, so x equals pi over 2. So that's where it comes from. Then the next step, we have to find our midpoint and our quarter point. All right, so remember... The midpoint is going to be 0 plus pi over 2, our two new asymptotes, divided by 2. All right, so that's going to give us a midpoint of pi over 4. Okay, so then I have to take 0 plus pi over 4 and divide it by 2, and that gives me pi over 8, so that's our quarter point. And then I have to take uh, pi over 4 plus pi over 2, okay, because that's where my midpoint is. And then divide by 2, that gives me 3 pi over 8. So that gives me my 3 quarter point when I do that. Now that I know my points that I have to evaluate, so I have to substitute in pi over 8 in for x, pi over 4 in for x, and 3 pi over 8 in for x into the original equation y equals 1 half of cotangent of 2x. All right, so I'm going to get obtain my y values for each one of those. This is just like the other two examples. Um, I think you guys can pick this up. I don't need to go into super depth. But when I substitute in pi over 8 in for x, my y becomes 1 half. When I substitute pi over 4 in for x, 
my y becomes zero, and when I substitute in three pi over eight in for x, my y becomes negative one half. All right, so now we graph that, right? Now our first step is to put our two asymptotes on. The asymptotes are at zero and pi over two, and then we plot the three points here on the bottom of the slide and connect them. So pretty basic. Uh, if you guys have questions on this, feel free you know, to email me. Uh, obviously, those of you in class ask questions in class. Uh, those of you guys reviewing this at home, you know, you can ask me, email me, uh, let me know. But there's how you would manually plot uh, the cotangent piece. Remember, cotangent starts at positive infinity, goes to negative infinity. So if we look at this, yes, we did the right job here. Okay. Now, what's this one going to do? Remember, this is a vertical shift. These are the easy ones. This just takes the original graph and he's either going to shift it up or down. In this case, it's 2 plus tangent x. So we're going to graph tangent of x and shift it up two units. So tangent of x, right, in general, should go between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2 for our first period. We're going to take the value at 0 and shift it up two units. Okay? It should be pretty straightforward and pretty basic. All right, you can do this in your calculator as well. You know, go to y equals, hit 2 plus tangent of x, hit zoom 7, and you can see the shifted graph. And then if you wanted to compare it, go down to y2 and type in tangent of x, and you would see the original graph. And see, you know, this is the original graph of tangent shifted up 2 units. All right, pretty basic on, on that one here. But we can also take a look, like I said, on your calculator so you can kind of see what's going on uh, with the translation and it being up shifted two units and, you know, kind of what happens. So, uh, you know, take a look at it. Remember that you need to be in radians and you need to hit zoom seven. Zoom seven puts it into a trig graphing mode uh, versus your standard graphing mode. All right. So let's take a look at this one here. Right. Remember from sine and cosine, these get to be the more complicated graphs. All right, and we have to pay attention to finding the b. So now, all right, our, our parent equation is at the top, right? y equals c plus a cotangent of x minus d. Now what are we adding? We're adding a phase shift. So we have a vertical shift here of negative 2. Let's just analyze this before we start any work. We have a vertical shift here of negative 2, which means the graph is shifted down 2 units. Cotangent is negative, okay, which means the graph of cotangent is now flipped. So now it's going to start at negative infinity and go to positive infinity. All right. This, the argument, we have to factor a 4 out. Okay. So we're going to factor out the 4 there so that we can get our B. Or, I'm sorry, we're going to factor out a 1 fourth, not a 4. So, all right. So we get our B uh, when we go through there. Hopefully that helps make sense. All right. B, the period is going to be pi because our B ends up being 1. Okay. So, you know, other than that, the phase shift is what? Pi over 4. And since this is just reviewing from sine and cosine, right? Since the phase shift, since it's x minus pi over 4, what do we have to do? It's shifted to the right pi over 4 units. Okay? So you just have to find the local asymptotes, right? Uh, that's no different than taking the argument piece. The argument is x minus pi over 4, setting it equal to pi over 2. And so, I'm sorry, we're doing cotangent, so I misspoke there. We're going to take the argument here, which is x minus pi over 4, set it equal to 0 and solve for x. All right, And then we're going to take the argument x minus pi over 4 and set it equal to pi and solve for x to get our two new vertical asymptotes. So our two new vertical asymptotes are pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. All right, then we have to divide that interval into four equal parts. So you're going to take pi over 4 plus 5 pi over 4, divide it by 2. This is very repetitive now of what we're doing with all these. That gives us the midpoint, okay? So that gives us 3 pi over 4. And then we have to take pi over 4 plus 3 pi over 4 and divide it by 2. That gives us pi over 2 for our quarter point. And then I have to take um, 3 pi over 4 plus 5 pi over 4 divided by 2, and that gives me pi, which is our czar 3 quarter point. All right, now we have to substitute those three values in. We're going to substitute in the pi over 2 
in for x for the original function, 3 pi over 4 in for the x for the original function, and pi goes in for the x into the original function. All right, so flipping back, the original function here is at the top, negative 2 minus cotangent of x minus pi over 4. So we're going to substitute those three values in for x and get our new y values. Our new y values are negative 3, negative 2, and negative 1. So that's what we have to plot on the curve. All right, so we calculated our new vertical asymptotes, negative 3 pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. All right, and then we've plotted our points and connected the dots for a nice smooth curve. So with this, you know, sometimes on the homework assignment, it'll ask you to plot two, you know, periods. So you can put the additional period to the left or to the right. Uh, you'll see your answer choices on there when you do it. All right, let's do one more example. Now this is going the other direction. So here you're getting the graph and you have to determine the equation for this graph. Okay, so let's take a look at some things. You know, where are the vertical asymptotes? That's the first question you should ask yourself. Where are the vertical asymptotes? Well, they're between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So what does that tell you? That it, This, you know, is looking more like what type of graph? A tangent graph or a cotangent graph, all right? So you should be thinking, how, right? It's looking tangent-ish, right, because of the restrictions. Does it mean it could be something where we've altered a cotangent graph? We could. We could alter a cotangent graph, so it could match this as well. And, you know, what else is, you know, if this was a tangent graph, the graph would be going the other way, right? It would be going from negative infinity to positive infinity. But this graph is going from what? Positive infinity down to negative infinity. Well, that means, you know, it, it could be cotangent, or it means we could have flipped a tangent graph as well. So there's a couple different things here. All right, and then our points are at two. So, um, you know, we gotta just do some analyzing and take a look. But go with your gut instincts, all right? And, and see that it is tangent. The, the vertical asymptotes really are the key here. I'm gonna choose tangent, right? Because it's between negative pi over two and pi over two. Then what really happens, all right? Those key points that are graphed tell us that we have a two in front of that tangent. And that tangent is reflected because it's negative, right? You have to remember that tangent goes the other way, but this should be y equals negative 2 tangent of x. But, you know, talk yourself through it in your head when you're going through the problems like this. Um, these ones won't be overwhelmingly, you know, complicated. But let's do another example here. This one, right? What's the vertical asymptotes? There's a vertical asymptote at 0 and a vertical asymptote at pi over 2. In your mind, hey, we should be thinking automatically that this is probably cotangent, right? Just based on the vertical asymptotes. What else is peculiar about this graph? Is it, look at the middle point. The middle point's at negative one, or uh, pi over four, negative one. That tells me this graph is what? Shifted down a unit, okay? So, shouldn't be too complicated. We should be able to see this and say, all right, we discovered that it's cotangent, all right, of 2x, and it's shifted down 1, okay? So the period, right, the period is normally what? On cotangent 0 to pi. But in this case, it's 0 to pi over 2, which is half of that, okay? So the normal period is 0 to pi for cotangent, but in this case it's 0 to pi over 2, which is half of that. So for that to work, that's why we need cotangent of 2, because our b is 2. All right, pi over b would give us pi over 2, since our period is defined as pi over 2. So you got to work backwards there a little bit and understand these. All right, but this graph, you know, you should be able to mentally walk yourself through it and see uh, what the restrictions are and, and if it's shifted down and if you think it might be cotangent or, or uh, tangent in that aspect, okay? So just because they're, you know, the circular functions are periodic, there might be multiple equations for these, all right? So that's why I was saying, hey, it could be a tangent graph shifted this way and this way and this way, or it could be cotangent. So just know the last two examples, there's a couple different ways to write these, and this just this slide just kind of shows how you can relate the two. 
okay? And that there are multiple answers, but find the one that works the best and easiest, all right? On your homework, you might be able to work the opposite direction as well. But the two examples we did for six, it was more or less writing in the simplest form, okay? If we look back at this slide, right? Those are not the simplest forms of those equations. We found them in the simple form and the base form. But there are, you know, multiple ways we could write those functions, all right? But, uh, you know, for you guys on the test and things like that, it'll probably be more multiple choice. So you'll be able to hone us in on what the exact answer is, okay? Well, that is all for this section. So, so far, you know, we've covered how to do sine and cosine. And we've covered how to do tangent and cotangent. So all we've got left is secant and cosecant. And as long as we know how to do sine and cosine, we can do secant and cosecant. All right. See you in class or email me with questions.